Hey guys, I'm Danny Pedraza and this is my pup Brooklyn. We are going to help teach you to train your dog to take a bow. The first thing that you will need on you in order to start learning this behavior is high value treats. High value treats come in handy for more advanced tricks like this just because your dog will want to be motivated to do this cue with a high value treat. They might not be so eager to perform, you know, the shoulder dips or being put in that position if you're just using kibble or using their everyday treat when they're, you know, being told to sit or lie down. So finding the high value treat that your dog goes goo goo gaga for is essential. Right now I'm using a slice of um, ham. So this is something that he loves and works really well for me when I'm teaching him a new trick. You could use little pieces of chicken, little pieces of cheese, little hot dogs, whatever works. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to have on you is a clicker or a clicker word such as yes. So every time that I click and you don't have a clicker, you can say yes. And that is essentially, you know, indicating to your dog that the behavior they're performing is correct. And it's really helpful to communicate to your dog that. Um, with your clicker, if you've never used a clicker before, or if you, Squimmy, what are you doing? Um, if you've never used a clicker before, or you haven't used a clicker word before, you can charge your clicker by clicking, giving a treat, clicking, giving a treat. And you can do that for about 10 to 15 to 20 times until your dog associates a click or yes with a treat. So that is the first step before we even try to start training this. We are going to be shaping this behavior by rewarding in small increments. What I mean is it's okay that if your dog, if we're gonna be using the treat to lure your dog into this position, but it's absolutely probably what's gonna end up happening is your dog is not going to perform the behavior just by you luring hit the treat to the floor he's not automatically going to perform that. So you will want to start shaping that behavior and rewarding him for the small progression that he's making in performing that cue. So the first step is we do want to start him off in a standing position. Brooklyn, stand. Good. So since Brooklyn's tired and maybe your pup's tired too, I'm just giving him little pieces of this high value treat to ensure that he doesn't sit back down or lay back down and he's staying in the stand. The next thing that I'm doing is I'm taking the treat and I'm going to be lowering his head, you know, down. So we're going to just try and aim for a small, a small indicator that he's lowering his head and I'm giving him that treat and you're going to repeat it a couple times just to be sure that he is performing that cue. Yeah, good job. So you're going to do that until you're having his head all the way towards the ground. So rewarding for, you know, being lowered and maybe lowered even more. Good job. And eventually getting to the point where his shoulders are dipping. So in order to do that, what might help is to take the treat and bring it towards his chest just to create that shoulder dip. Good job. And do that a handful of times more. The next step after you get that shoulder dip is wanting to push it back towards his chest a little bit more to make his elbows get to the ground. So we're going to, yes, good job. Okay, so we're going to aim for that consistency of getting his elbows to the ground and clicking when they hit the floor. Good job. I'm also not giving him the full treat. I'm letting him take little pieces off, but I'm also moving my hand back so that he stands up right away after the cue. Because what you don't want to happen is your dog to perform the cue and then lay down after. You want them to stand back up. So I'm moving it down, yes. And I'm bringing it back up. So that's essentially the start of this, uh, of this cue. The other thing that I'm not doing, as you see, is I'm not incorporating a verbal cue. So I'm not saying bow, and I'm not doing that until he 
gets into the actual position every single time. And then I can say bow. Yes, good job. So that's how I would introduce the verbal cue and only when he's at that point. So I would bring it and I would say bow. Yes. Okay. The other thing is if you want to start adding a hand signal, you will, once he gets to the point where you have the treat in the hand, you're saying bow and luring him into that position, giving your click or saying yes, and then taking him out from and make him stand up. That's when you can remove the treat from your hand and just use the hand signal. Um, you could have the treat behind your back, use the hand signal. Okay, ready? He knows that I don't have it. Ready? Oh, you're not gonna do it for me, huh? So because he wouldn't do it for me, I'm still gonna use, good job. Okay, up. I took it out of my hand. Yes, good job. And I'm only gonna treat him after. So that's when you can start incorporating saying bow and without bow. Yes. Okay, good job. And that's how you would slowly start introducing the verbal cue and the hand signal and removing the treat to then just using the hand signal and the verbal cue. The other thing too is if your dog is laying down every time that you put him into that shoulder press, is that the right word? Shoulder press? Uh, shoulder dip? Um, it's totally okay and it will happen. So what you can do is to prevent them from laying down is put your hand underneath their stomach and kind of lift their rear in the air and then eventually you can remove your hand and um, get him into that position. But I hope this helps and I hope that over time you can then tell your dog to bow. Yes, good job. And they will do that. Thanks for listening, guys.